These red herrings are popping up left and right. They're all secret plots, okay? Like the thing with the the MAGA, with the American Indian, and you had the brother, I think his name is uh, Ephraim. Chief Ephraim, right. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. That's their media. Their media is a popular persuasion. Why? Because most people believe what they see on TV, what they see on the news. I believe it. Don't. Read it again. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. They try to stir up a commotion to get people against us. Go ahead. They hinder the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Guess what? They're not going to hinder this. This is going to keep going all on and on. Everybody understand that? It's a crisis time. on the entire earth how is this god's favorite how are we looking at god's favor right now they bombs look at them they fell so very low read it from the top keep therefore and do them do the commandments for this is your wisdom and your understanding and the sight of the nations that's what make us wise that's what make us different for us to all be wearing fringes on our clothes Right? Give me do uh, uh, numbers 15 to 38. Right. That's that's the wisdom. You know, why do we wear fringes? I'm asking you because you've been reading, right? We about to teach you right now. Right? So I want you to leave that cigarette, throw that thing on the ground, leave it. Throw it in the trash. No more cigarettes, bro. All praises. All praises. All praises. All praises. That's called repentance. You see that? Are they teaching that in church? All right, so my brother just got rid of that cigarette. Lord willing, he's not going to continue that any further because he's destroying his temple, That's right. which the Lord should be dwelling in, right? Once he starts to keep the commandments, once y'all all start to keep the commandments. So he threw that cigarette on the ground. That's one step closer to the kingdom for that brother. That's right. All right? Amen. And we're going to give you one too, right? And that's what the church need to be teaching because that very act, though it seems small, that's a, that's, that very act right there will help change our community. That's right. That very thing right there. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their gardens. So right now we're going to set the scene. We just came out of Egypt. What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? For those Bible scholars out here right now. What, was the, what were the children of Israel doing in Egypt? He was over there. Um... Were we having a good time? We was having a good time in Egypt? Mm -hmm. We was dancing, partying in Egypt, or where we served in slavery? We were slaves. We were, slaves. We were the Hebrew slaves. That was your daddy, your uncle, your aunts, and, and aunties, and grandmothers. That was your people. They were serving slavery. For how many years? Temples and all types of stuff. They was building all the treasurous, treasurous cities that you see standing today. Right? We were those people, the Hebrews. Building up Egypt. That's what we were doing. So when we left Egypt, right, we had to come out of that land and we had to start with something. So when we left, when we left Egypt, yes, we were happy, right? We was excited to get out of slavery, like anyone would. That's right. Right? Just like we're gonna be delivered from here. So we came out of Egypt, right? We went and the, the Mo and Moses uh, departed the Red Sea through the power of the Lord, and God guided us out uh, through the Red Sea. And now we're in the wilderness. Now we just a bunch of people, Wait on it. A, a whole body of people standing around looking at each other, still got the same customs that we learned from our slave masters in Egypt, Jeez. right? Now we're just, we just, we don't know what to do now. So now we have our leader Moses. Our leader Moses goes and speaks to God and he lays upon us the foundation 
the government that we supposed to now keep. Preach. The law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. Bring it up. I'm just setting the stage, all right? Read that from the top. Verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. All right, so one of the commandments. We just got out of Egypt. We in the wilderness. We don't know what to do. We still acting like Egyptians and heathens. We just, we barbaric. We don't know what we doing in here. We just out here now, right? We just like children running rampant right now. So Moses said, look, God gave me this list of uh, rules and things and things to do to govern our people because you need government. You need order. You need an establishment, right? That's right. right. Law, statutes, and commandments. This is plain to see. All right? So he said one of those things is the way y'all better dress is y'all better make sure you got fringes on your garments. Right. You better make sure you got fringes on your garments. Throughout their generations. Uh -huh. Continuously. So as you have children, those children better have fringes on their garments. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. Look at these brothers around you. Right? Now these fringes, these can be different colors. But this ribbon better be blue. Light blue, dark blue, it better be blue. Alright? Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that ye may look upon it, uh -huh. and remember all the commandments of the Lord. All the what? All the commandments of the Lord. What is the purpose of fringes? Commandments of the Lord. To remember the commandments of the Lord. What is the, what is the purpose of fringes? Remember the commandments of the Lord. That's it. That's it. So remember the commandments. Of, excuse me. Verse 39, and it shall be unto you for a friends that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And what? And do them. It says just have faith in Christ. And do them. And do them. Faith without actual works is dead. What, what's the point of you having faith if you're not putting in the work? It don't just come that easy. So the Bible says when you wake up in the morning, you know you got to go to work. You about to leave, make sure you get your, yourself together. And them shirts better have fringes, brothers. That's right. Get fringes on your shirts and don't leave the house without them because they're going to make you remember the commandments of the Lord. All right? That was just one commandment right there. We got several others because we are a nation of people. Are That's we right. not? We not just slaves, are we? You need government to get to... to Keep people in order, man. Right. It's just plain and simple. Right? Malachi 2 and 7 real quick. Because the church isn't teaching that. The church not teaching because we still think that we're Americans. That's the problem. Like we read earlier. Wood and stone. That's what we're going to serve. We're going to serve our enemies in wood and stone. So everything that our slave masters are, that's what we are. Right? And you can see that easily today, can't you? Our sisters desperately want to have what kind of hair? Blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Blonde hair. Bring it out. Damn, that's sad, bro. Colored hair, period. Huh? Colored hair, period. Colored hair, everything but that hair that brother got right here. That your hair, that you have. This brother got. This brother has. That brother has. They want everything but to look like us. So who, whose responsibility is it? It's our responsibility to teach them. Right. Otherwise, y'all you, you, got all y'all got children. We all got children out here. Bring it up. Otherwise, they're going to grow up and they're going to be just like that slave master. We're going to be here for another That's 400 right. years. Question. Yes, sir. How what you can got? you teach someone that don't want to learn or probably can't learn? How do you, you know, teach someone? I mean, if you have uh, uh, someone that has a physical disability. A you know physical I mean? disability? Physical disability of whatever. You know, I'm just being, you know, in general. Okay. Or someone like me that just, you know, they'll listen, but at the same time, they just don't want it, you know. Uh, exactly. They'll hear you and they'll believe you. Okay. But as far as putting the work into it, that's something, that's some another, another, what is that? another uh, subject. Isaiah that's 28 subject. and 13. Uh, I said, keep telling them. I said, as long as you keep telling them, that's all you can do. Yeah. You can't force them. You can't beat them. You, know what I'm talking about? you can't do a lot of it. I just believe mean, you just keep saying. It. I mean, you can't stop what you talk. Just keep saying. So your question is, how do you teach a people that just don't want to hear the words of the Lord, right? They don't want to learn. They don't want to learn. They don't want to hear. They don't want to learn. They don't want to learn, right? Our people are stiff necked and rebellious. Moses dealt with that very thing. And guess what happened to those people? They died. 
Every last one of them. They died. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. And this is the fruit of it, brother. Look at look at it right here. This is the you answer your own question by looking at these signs. Mm -hmm. It ain't hard to see. Our people are I dead out here. I, I feel like I feel like that's the reason why I'm still here though. Cause I got into three car accidents before and two of them I actually got physically hit in my body. Even though that was tragic for you, the Lord is still trying to pull on your heart, bro. That's right. That's mercy. Three car accidents and you ain't dead yet? Right. And you how old? 23. 23 years old. You still got a chance to, like you still have a chance to repent. That's right. It's no coincidence that you're here today. That's right. I feel like it's because he knows what's really on my heart and he knows what I really believe. And it's in. not enough. And that's not enough. You got to put action behind it. Faith without works is? Dead. Dead. Mm -hmm. Dead. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Uh-huh. Woe to the rebellious children. To the who? To the rebellious children. You know what the word woe means? Woe. Woe. Woe unto those rebellious children. I thought you were talking about black rod. Woe unto them. You know what that means? You know what that precept is? Woe. Who knows what uh, the precept for woe is? What it say? It's like, uh, uh, it just fitted for destruction. Like pause for a second? No, it means woe as in destruction. Oh. Destruction, meaning death. Death. In fact, hold this and give us uh, Romans 6 and 23. Yes, sir. Uh-uh, not that one, not that one. Romans 6 and 23. So the Bible says, woe unto the rebellious children. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. How are you going to repay the Lord back with sin? from you committing sin with your life with blood because back in the day we was doing what animal sacrifice but christ came he showed us some mercy he became that animal sacrifice now we have the chance to repent so for the fact that you said you read this bible you know that you're an israelite you know what you must do right now you're going going back go back to the other one this is what you're doing right now isaiah chapter 30 verse 1 Woe to the rebellious children. Destruction to those rebellious children. Death. Say of the Lord. Uh huh. That take counsel, but not of me. Take counsel, but not of me. We listen to everybody else. Are oh, you good, bro? The Lord got you. The Lord got He dealing with you. Right? You you straight. You good in the name of Jesus. Right? But you taking counsel, but it ain't of this. It's not of this. Right. Because if you if you took counsel of this and understood this, you would understand that, well, the Lord is showing me mercy. I got in like three car accidents. Let me hurry up and get my stuff together because next time, it ain't going to be so pretty. I might just get put to death and it ain't no more chances after that. Bring it out. You said you got a child. What's going on? Right? You got to get it together, bro. Get out. The Lord is not going to keep playing with you. We, I'm telling you as a brother, the Lord is not going to keep playing with you. Verse 31. I mean, excuse me. Verse 30 and 1. Isaiah 30 and 1. Uh -huh. Woe to the rebellious children, uh -huh. saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. We and take counsel, but not of the Lord. We listen to everybody else tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. We, we listen to everybody else tell us what good, bad, and wrong is. But the Bible says, and that cover with a covering, uh -huh. but not of my spirit, mm. that they may add sin to sin. That we may add sin on top of sin on top of sin. So we want to listen to our own vain thoughts and tell God what we going to do. We going to tell everybody else what we going to do. Right. Well, look, look, I'm, I'm, I'm straight, man. Look, I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm chilling. I got a job. Okay, that's a good thing. The Lord must be dealing with me. He must be showing some mercy for me. But that's not the case, brother. The Lord, the reason why y'all alive today is to repent. What's the whole purpose? What's we read it? What's the whole duty of men? What's our purpose? To do what? Abide by the commandments, God's rules, the commandments. That's the whole purpose, and to teach our people that same thing. Otherwise, we're gonna be in here for another what? Four hundred years? Y'all ready to go through another thing of slavery? Y'all, we never. Today we haven't been through what our forefathers and foremothers went through. Right. Sun up, sun down. I think they said what? Uh, this past few days when it was hot as hell outside has been like the highest since a long time. Right? The heat index at 108. It's been like 98 degrees outside. Can y'all work in that from sun up to sun down? Every single day, no days off except Sunday, so you can get indoctrinated by this man right here. Right. Y'all ready for that again? 
The Bible says, woe unto you rebellious children. We got to get ourselves together. It starts right here. That's right. It starts right here. Verse 2, that want to go, excuse me, that want to go down into Egypt and have not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So the Bible said, read that part again. He says, we want to go down into Egypt. Egypt was our slave master. The Pharaohs, all of those guys, the kings of Egypt, they were our slave masters. Right. But we would rather look for them to save us. We would rather look for them for bread, for, uh, for water, for shelter, for, for everything that a man and his family needs. Instead of going to the Lord. So we look for everything else to take care of us. Except God himself, who is the author of all, all things. things. Creator of all things. Yeah, Verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt have not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh uh -huh. and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Mm. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Therefore the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. Let's fast forward to today because we may not all know the history, right? But let's fast forward to today. Do our people not look for the other nations to take care of us? Do we not depend on the system? Yes, because you're looking for Japan to give us metal and all that gas and stuff like that. Okay, that's on a that's on a national level, right? But I'm talking about as it relates to our people and our people alone. Do we not look for the so-called white man to take care of all of our needs? Most. Do we not want to be just like them? Yeah, you got some people out here. Right, where's that envy? You got some people out here. Do we not look for them, right? We look for everything that that man, that that man has that we built for him. We look for everything that he has to give to us, but we can't do anything for ourselves, including govern our own community. And it's not that we don't want to. We have the ability to say, hey bro, pull up your pants. We got that ability. We got the ability to say, hey, what's your name? Dewan. Dewan, brother Dewan, look bro, I see you as a king of God on this earth and you gonna rule one day. Put that cigarette down that's beneath you. Right. Let them go. Let them white people do that. They sell that, but we ain't got to buy it from them. That's right. In fact, since we are the ones that's probably buying it the most, let's make sure all of our people don't buy it no that's more. Right. Right. It's an industry that will be destroyed and right. their pockets going to be hurt. That's right. Boom. Boom. Right there. Mm -hmm. You just destroyed an entire, uh, what, what's the word for? You just destroyed an entire commodity for them. And an entire economy for them. Right? Just by putting down that cigarette alone. Now you teach that brother. Now he teach his son. Now that son goes to school and tell everybody in his classroom. Now it's getting around an entire community. We can take over like this. Bring it out. By that alone. Just keeping the commandments. That's why the Bible says this is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth